Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on area movements of inertia. This time we will be emphasizing on the parallel axis theorem, also known as the Steiner's theorem. That theorem has been named by the Swiss mathematician Jacob Steiner, by the way. We will explain the purpose of the parallel axis theorem and show you how to apply it. First of all, you might be wondering what is the parallel axis theorem good for in the first place. The parallel axis theorem is a mathematical tool that allows you to calculate the area moment of inertia of an area profile with respect to a coordinate system that is not a centroidal coordinate system, without the need to perform the integration. As an example, I have a rectangle and we have computed the area moment of inertia of a rectangle already in the first video of the series. If you have watched that video, you know that we computed the area moment of inertia with respect to a centroidal coordinate system as well as with respect to a coordinate system that has its origin outside of the centroid. And if you know your formula for the area moment of inertia with respect to a centroidal coordinate system. And by the way, most formulas uh, listed in tables refer to the centroidal coordinate system. Uh, you can use these formulas, which uh, are hopefully already provided in the tables, in combination with some geometry of the rectangle or the body in question to compute your area moment of inertia with respect to a coordinate system uh, which I've labeled as y prime and z prime. In the text they're labeled as y star and z star, but they're basically the same. And you don't need to perform the integration of the area. Therefore, I would just suggest to start learning by doing. Before plugging in any values, let's briefly evaluate the set of equations pertaining to the parallel axis theorem. I sub y prime refers to the area moment of inertia with respect to the y prime axis. The y prime axis belongs to the coordinate system that has its origin outside of the centroid at the top right of the rectangle z sub cg squared. z sub cg refers to the distance along the z-axis between the centroid and the y prime axis. So z sub cg, again, that's the distance between the uh, centroidal uh, y-axis and the y prime axis. Let me label that distance. And remember, that distance is the distance along the along the z axis. So this here would be the aforementioned distance between the centroid and the y prime axis. And if you examine the dimensions of the rectangle, you will realize that this distance is a over two. Quite simply because the centroid is in the middle of the rectangle and the middle is at a over two. A, capital A, that's the total area of the rectangle or the body in question. And I sub y, is the area moment of inertia of the rectangle of the body with respect to the centroidal coordinate system. And I sub y is given. And now let's start plugging the values. I will begin with I sub y prime is equal to z sub cg squared 
that is a half squared times a the area of the rectangle that's simply a times b plus i sub y and that term is given it's 1 12th times a to the th to the third power times b we can simplify this expression let's have one quarter times a to the third power times b plus one twelfth times a to the third power times b and if you add up one quarter and one twelfth together you're gonna get four divided by twelve a to the third power times b and four twelve can be simplified into one and three so you end up with one third a to the third power times b and if you watch the first video that equation will look familiar to you in the first video we calculated the area moment of inertia of a rectangle with respect to an axis system that has its origin at the top right of the rectangle uh, and the r the value was one third times a to the third power times b so you see if you apply the parallel axis theorem you end up with the same result as if you had used the integral form and for i sub z prime in that situation we would apply the parallel axis theorem with respect to the uh, z prime axis and uh, y sub cg squared that would be the distance between the centroid and the uh, z prime axis along the y axis and i'm gonna label that distance on the sketch so this is y sub cg and that distance is b divided by 2 in analogy to a divided by 2 again the centroid is in the middle and the middle is at b, at, at b divided by 2 and if you apply that equation to find the arrow moment of inertia with respect to the z prime axis you're gonna get b half squared the area is again a times b plus i sub z and that's 1 12 times a times b to the third power and I will make a shortcut if you work out the math you will arrive at one-third times a times b to the th to the third power again you're gonna arrive at the same equation as you obtained in the first video when we used the integral form of the arrow moment of inertia okay 
I hope I could clarify the purpose of the parallel access theorem. And by the way, let me just label for your information that this one is z sub cg is equal to a over 2 and this one is y sub cg is equal to b divided by 2. As I said before, you can always apply the integral form of the equation and if you decide to do so, you don't need to worry about the parallel access theorem. Only if you don't want to integral form, and as long as you have the formula for the area moments of inertia with respect to the centroidal coordinate system at hand, then you can use the parallel access theorem to calculate the area moments of inertia if you want to compute it, uh, for a coordinate system that does not run through the centroid of the area. I am glad that you were with us and I would be happy to have you back with us again.